All right, all right, guys, we're back at it again. By the end of today's video, we'll be done with the canopy, the tray, whatever you want to call this on the back of the Tacoma. So I'm working on the fenders first here and we're just making our own fenders using some 16 gauge steel. So I'm just putting score lines in using my metal saw there and just using a fence so that we can get those score lines nice and straight. Um, the score lines make it a lot easier to put the bends in, but the problem when you do score lines um, that I realize is like the material right around, um, right where the bend is, um, it's definitely a bit thinner. So even in a couple places after the powder coat, there's just like a little tiny split. Um, and that's probably just because when they're sandblasting it, there's just not enough material there just to hold it. Um, but hey, those are things that you learn over time. Uh, one thing that I wish with this Tacoma bed here that I did. So the gas filler cap is really the only thing that you have to make sure that lines up correctly. And if I'd made the truck bed, about an inch wider on either side. It just would, it would have fit just that much better. Um, but hey, those are the things that you learn uh, when you're doing these things for the first time. The gas does go into the truck and I was able to extend it out a little bit and fabricate something that didn't look too bad. And one thing that I've really learned with steel fabrication is like, you can see I had a piece in there, I had to take it out, recut the angle. And that's just because the angle just wasn't correct. So I've really learned that it's, it's very important that if something is just not fitting correctly with steel, it's always best to redo it, get it to fit correctly because your welds are gonna look a lot better. And if they're exposed welds, then you definitely want that as well. Uh, but now you can kind of see on the rear here how the drawer kind of integrates with this rear bumper. Um, and then I've got these other vertical pieces um, to kind of differentiate where the tail, tail lights are gonna go. something to keep in mind so like I, I think I mentioned on the first or second video that most of the framing members are 8th inch and then everything else is 16 gauge obviously just for weight um, most things don't need to have a heavy gauge thickness of steel um, but like I mentioned in the other one I wish mm, these upper framing portions or these load bearing portions I wish I had done it in a slightly smaller gauge of steel just to cut down on the weight of the truck So the bed of the truck here is eighth inch thick aluminum sheet and I'm just going to be using um, tap screws just to secure it to the truck bed. What's great about using aluminum with this and since obviously you know I can't really weld it to the steel is it's going to be removable. So if I ever need to get to the underside of the truck from the bed um, I, I can do that easily just with removing all the screws. Now here's where I started to run into problems. So, like I said, I mentioned I switched from wanting to use sheet steel to aluminum sheet uh, for weight. Um, so with that, you know, I can't obviously weld it to the steel, so I had to rivet it to the steel. Now, when I was doing this, I asked the powder coater, or a powder coater, um, if there's any issues with the powder coat process if I rivet aluminum sheet to steel. 
he said there was no problems with doing that. Now, if you're listening to this and you're kind of laughing, um, aluminum and steel in the powder coat process, they expand at different rates. So I've already had the truck pack and the roof, which I had to rivet down to it, and I didn't have an easy way to get it off because of my poor design choices. Um, that upper roof part got quite warped. Um, I was able to fix it to make it look half decent, but um, it's just some of these things that you just don't even think about. And the first powder coater said it was no problem, and then the other guy that I ended up having to take it to because the first guy didn't have a big enough oven for my thing. Um, he, he, he wasn't worried about the expansion of it. He was just worried about coverage. So like separating the pieces and then reattaching them after the powder coat process would have alleviated all of our problems. And I could have done that, but my design just didn't really allow for it. So we live and we learn with this, but the end product is still very good. Um, we just got a bit of warping on some of the aluminum pieces here. These doors were a bit of a struggle and a lot, a lot of work. I think each one took me about a day to fabricate. So that's one thing with all this fabrication stuff. It's like, because I'm fabricating everything from scratch, everything just, you know, takes a little bit longer, but uh, that's kind of the process. That's, that's the joy of doing things yourself. So I was able to bend all of these by hand and they turned out pretty good. I mean, for a hand bent door out of aluminum, just using some basic hand tools, it, they, they do look pretty good. I'm um, using a, an actual commercial bender, like a big sheet metal bender would have been um, much easier and maybe for future projects, if I have something similar to that, I would definitely go that route um, and just have somebody do it for me. Um, but we learned a lot in this process. One thing is, um, on some of the ends there, my score lines were a little bit too deep. So the aluminum was kind of splitting a little bit at the ends, but I added stiffeners and stuff so that it shouldn't really progress any further. So now that we've got the door panel done and we've got our kind of frame brackets fabricated, we can start getting basically the entire assembly together here. So I used some, some long, I think it was one and eighth inch round steel tube um, to act as stiffeners. So I kind of stole this design off of a company from um, Australia that does these trays and stuff. And just looking at photos, like fortunately a lot of companies, they show pretty detailed photos of how things go together. So it does make it a bit easier. Um, you still have to fabricate and figure it out, um, but you at least have a basic design of something that has worked for another fabricator. So I was able to get these together, get them riveted together. Um, and yeah, if I were to do this again, we'd keep this separate for powder coat and then reattach them with rivets afterwards. So with a lot of things on this, you know, I wasn't able to find exactly what I wanted, so I had to make my own hinges here. So I was actually able to find a piece of half, or I forget the exact size of it, but it fit a half inch bolt perfectly on the inside and it was just a piece of stainless. So that's what I used for where the bolts are connected into and they didn't powder coat on the inside of that, obviously, um, so that we have a nice little hinge there. 
um, but it worked out great and the hinges I mean kind of happy with some things are working good and then other things in the project weren't weren't fantastic but hey you got to take the good with the bad Now, a lot of the design choices in terms of how things look, a lot of it is also predicated by how easy it is to fabricate things. So I try to keep things looking kind of like cool, industrial, but also make it easy for myself to fabricate these things. So we've got the kind of rear tailgate section. I was going to make it like a regular tailgate that has like the, um, the cables coming from the side, but it just, I wasn't going to be able to get it to look correct and um, it was just much easier just to fabricate it so it swung all the way down and then the little fabrication plate that I have um, is much more accessible with the tailgate as it goes all the way down as well. So I was able to get some pretty cool tailgate doors fabricated up and then I'm also making some, I'm just calling them tool carriers. Two of them are two feet by two feet. Another one fits the air compressor and the other one fits my tool bag um, that basically sits right on the truck bed. And then there's little pieces of three eighths inch rod um, that actually falls into holes that I drilled out into the truck bed. So things won't be flying around, but I'll show those in a lot more detail in the next video, just so you can kind of see how it all works. So we can take that truck bed off, get it all ready, get it all finished, and send it off to powder coat. Awesome. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next video. Talk to you soon. Peace.